Good evening, everybody. I know it's 1.30 in the afternoon, Mike, doing this, but I wanted to get this done in advance. Uh, I have uh, so much to share with you, so much God has just been doing for Ricky and I that all I can say is it's because of his mercy and his favor. Um, I wanted to share something with you uh, that Ricky and I, we both wanted, we both want to share with you to say the least. Um, it's, uh, something that we were reading out of a proclamation book from, uh, a, a book by John, uh, a, pray, a prayer book in a sense by John Hagee. And I really wanted to share this with you because it's something that God really burdened us with, to say the least. The book is called The King's Daughter Becoming a Woman of God, Proclamations, Releasing the Power of God's Word. It's a, This is based on, on everything in, in this is based on God's Word. And these are prayers, it's the, the best way I know of to describe it. And I want to share with you what we read just before uh, we went in to the Social Security office uh, on Wednesday. This is entitled, The Favor of God. In the name of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. Therefore, I am entitled to covenant kindness and favor. The favor of God is among the righteous. His favor surrounds the righteous. Therefore, it surrounds me. Isn't that awesome? I expect the favor of God to be in manifestation everywhere I go and in everything I do. Never again will I be without the favor of God. Satan, my days in Lodabar cease today. I am leaving that place of lack and want. I am going from the pit to the palace because the favor of God rests richly on me and profusely abounds in me. I am part of the generation that will experience the immeasurable, limitless, and surpassing favor of God producing in my life supernatural increase, promotion, prominence, preferential treatment, restoration, honor, increased assets, great victories, recognition, petitions granted, policies and rules changed on my behalf. Stress, something stressed there. And battles one that I don't have to fight. The favor of God is upon me. It goes before me. Therefore, my life will never be the same. And if you want some references, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, Acts 3 verse 25, Psalm 5 verse 12, 97 11, Titus, 1 Timothy 1 14, Colossians 2 15, John 10 verse 10, Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 13, Psalm 112 verses 1 through 4, Psalm 84 verses 11 and 12, Genesis 39 21, Exodus 321 11 3, Deuteronomy 33 23, 2 Chronicles 20 verses 15 and 29, 1 Samuel 16 verse 22, I believe Ezra. Or Esther 2.17, 5 verse 8, 8 verse 5, and 8, and Psalm 44 verse 3. I'll post a, a picture, I have a still picture, of all those verses in case you didn't get it. Because I know, I go, e -e 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 -e, sorry. But I, I had to share this with you today to show you just how powerful God was to us. Uh, Wednesday, and he still is. Uh, we went in there. We weren't sure what was going to happen, but we, I knew, I felt the presence of the Lord. I stepped out for a moment to go to the bathroom. I, I have a condition where I constantly have to go to the bathroom. And as I got back, I was made aware immediately 
the woman that was speaking with with Ricky concerning his social security case said we're granting you this waiver we're granting you this waiver and that just flooded me with joy and relief and I could see it in Ricky's face too and I was so grateful I don't know how to say it I was just absolutely grateful beyond anything I was rejoicing people we were thanking this woman up and down and she explained that and, and actually admitted that it was their fault concerning the overpayment because they were the ones that put the wrong information in and we were responding based on the information they gave us so therefore it wasn't our fault she also she also found us some extra things uh, in our expenses that we didn't think we'd be able to declare and that was of all the ironies our cable bill it's a combination of cable phone and internet Ricky considered it a luxury and didn't stick it in there so she stuck it in there she put it in and she pointed that out and plus she said you spend a whole lot more than 300 and some dollars a month on groceries. She, she said that, you know, I'm sure of that. And, and she's probably right. But by, uh, we, we told her and she understood we were basing it on how much we, you know, uh, for, by, by the month. And I, I realized what she was saying, too, that there's extras that we're, we're buying in. But bottom line, guys... And I want to share this with you. Bottom line, God was just so incredible to us. Just as incredible as he was in the life of Onesimus and putting him in Paul's path, which is a, a lot of what today's devotions are about. And if you want to go back to Sunday, this past Sunday, the, the, the vlog that I did, You'll see the whole message in great detail, but th there was something interesting here, how Paul is urging Philemon, who is the, the, the bearer of the name of this epistle. He's writing to this man who had come to know Christ. Please not only accept this young man back, not only forgive him and accept him back, but do something even better. Give him his freedom. He says, I find it very interesting how he says here, If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. I believe this is where Paul's asking Philemon, give him his freedom. Treat him like me. I'm a free man. So do, do the same for him. And he says, If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thine own self besides it. He was gently reminding, and this is where Paul's kind of like working Philemon over and giving him a good sell, like any used car dealer would. He's saying, just remember, I, I, I'm not going to bring this up, but remember, your salvation, remember I led you to Christ. And remember what you once were before you came to Christ. And he says, Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt do, that thou wilt also do more than I say. He's just saying, and, and this is such a thing, an example, a powerful example of Christ. Christ did that for us. He said, put all, all your sins on me. He says, I paid the price for your sin. Accept me. Accept what I did. Accept my forgiveness. Confess what you've done to me. Admit it. Be willing to admit it. Confess it and repent of it. And accept me as your Savior. Let me come into your heart. Let me, let me clean you up. You can't clean yourself up, but let me clean you up. And Paul was kind of reminding Philemon of this and... and through all of this, this past, the, the last several weeks, 
especially doing the Time Warp Wife devotional on grace. I've been seeing God's grace and his mercy and his favor in my life and my whole family's life, especially this past Wednesday. And, and, and I just have to praise God for it. I praise God for getting us through it and, and getting me. I'm still not completely better. You can kind of tell by the sound of my voice. But God's just, I know given me, he's giving me healing right now, even as I'm talking with you. I praise God for how quiet today's been and peaceful. You know, with everything that, that went on, I just, I can't help but give God, give God every last bit of glory for, for everything. And just as I know he did this for my husband in this area, I know that not only is he going to make sure that my disability review, which I'm asking for prayer on, uh, I found out every three years they do a disability review for people who are on Social Security disability to make sure that nothing's changed. And trust me, I would love for it to be this way, but nothing's changed for me. Uh, it's gotten worse. Uh, if it ever could get worse. I'm having constant, I constantly have pain going down from the center of my back, down my right, my right leg. And I've also had it go down my left leg on a couple of occasions, but mostly it's my right. I'm also having pain in my neck. It's it's constant. Uh, I can barely sleep at night. I, I have to, especially with how sick I've been with the cold, the chest cold, you know, being medicated sick is the only way I could, you know, be medicated, excuse me, is the only way I could been, I've been able to sleep. I actually have some muscle relaxers that, uh, I take very sparingly because I don't want to develop an addiction to it. But my pain is a constant is a constant seven. And it's something I know I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be able to get over, but you know what? I praise God. I'm here at least. But I'm having to take, you know, every measure I can to make sure that I have some form of comfort. But, you know, it could be a lot worse, as I said before. Like I said, I, I see the favor of God as I've seen his favor on Ricky with the Social Security decision. And as I see how he is just moving and guiding, especially with Ricky's employment case, but also with the criminal matter of the drunk driver that hit my husband. I'm just seeing God working through so much and showing me, showing me examples of his favor, his love, his mercy, his grace, and how I'm not to take it for granted. I'm not to go mocking it. I'm not to go treating it lightly. And I'm certainly not to go refusing showing grace and compassion toward others. And that's something I'm, I'm here to challenge you guys on. If you listen to this devotional, this daily devotional from Pastor Joe, you see what I'm talking about. Christ became our sacrifice once and for all on the cross for us. He didn't have to. He could have said, forget it, destroy him. But no, he willingly hung on that cross in agony and shame and humiliation died, was buried, and rose again three days later to set us free from sin. And just as Paul is explaining about the importance of showing forgiveness, Christ showed that to us. And I'm challenging all of you, if you've got somebody or, or, or a situation where you need to show forgiveness, where you need to show compassion and mercy to when you're having problems, Go to the Lord and ask him for help in showing that grace and mercy. Ask him to give you the, the, the courage to be able to do so. But most of all, most of all, I am issuing a challenge to those who don't know Christ. Before I close this post, I've got a really important question to ask you guys, those of you that don't know Christ. You've heard this message. 
you've heard the fact that that Christ did what he did for you. You you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are a sinner, that you are separated from God because of your sin. The Greek word for it is harmadia, which means to miss the mark. We've all missed the mark, and the penalty for that is death, a spiritual separation from God. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin, the penalty, the payment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus himself said in his word in John 14, verse 6, that he's the only way to heaven. I know there are a lot of you out there that have been told otherwise, and you're probably thinking what I'm telling you is a bunch of garbage, it's too good to be true. And you probably think, oh, doing good things, going to church, doing this and that won't will save you, but no. You've been deceived only by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and in his precious shed blood will you be set free from sin. And this is a free gift. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner. Realize that you can't do a thing to save yourself, but only Jesus' precious shed blood can save you. <clears throat> <coughs> Pardon me. I'm urging you today. Please accept him as your Savior. I'm posting a link here on how to come to know Christ. Click on it. Read it. Make that decision today. He doesn't care who you are what you've done, anything about you. But he wants to know you. He wants you to know him. So make that choice to accept him today. And I urge all those two who are having trouble accepting God's forgiveness in their life for something because Satan's trying to put something out of your past in your face. Maybe he's using family members to bring up your past, to bring up something petty and stupid that you did to bring it up against you, to make you feel like you're inferior, to try to put you down. I know, I've had that done to me. I've had family members bring up my past mistakes in my face. But you know what I tell them, and I hope they're hearing this. Guess what? All of that's been taken care of. It's under the blood of Christ. And I choose to accept that future for myself. And I choose to know that God has made me fearfully and wonderfully, and I'm not inferior in his eyes. So you can go stow it. And that's what you can tell those that are doing that to you. Believe it. I urge you, don't let Satan dictate your future, but let God. Know that you are forgiven, that you are his child. And if you're having problems accepting or forgiving someone, ask God to help you with this. Remember what I shared earlier with about Corey Ten Boom? Guys, allow him to enter into your heart to show you how to forgive someone. He said about forgiving 70 times 7. Ask him to help you. And he will, trust me. I've got to get going. I have a whole bunch to do. But I lift you all up in the name of the Lord on this awesome Friday. And... I pray that God's favor shines on you. I want to kind of close with something. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you his peace. May you know his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, his compassion always, and know that they never fail, they never run out. Amen. As I said, got to get going, but I hope and pray you guys all have a wonderful Friday, a wonderful Friday evening. See you tomorrow. Bye.